Meetings are an important part of what we do as scientists and uh, one part of meeting is conferences. And here are 10 tips uh, how to get the most out of attending a conference. So it starts with picking the right conferences. If you're unsure about what are the important conferences in your field and how to avoid these like predatory conferences, they, they tend to get invitations several times a day, um, then talk to a more experienced colleague, a lab mate or senior colleague, and ask them what is the meeting that you really ought to go to because many people in your field that are relevant to your research will also attend and that you will definitely get something out of like the staple meetings what are the staple meetings in your particular area so pick the right conference and um, one aspect of that is the size of the conference you know there's pluses and <laughs> minuses to conference size the big conferences can be almost completely overwhelming and exhausting uh, but you can also then pick more widely what you listen to. The smaller conferences, I typically prefer them because they tend to be closer to what you're interested in anyway. And so the people that you care to talking about are not so diluted as they might be in a bigger conference. But it's a matter of personal preference and also what you want to get out of the meeting. Another thing is set your goals. What is actually, what do you want to get out of that meeting? Do you want to just get new info? Do you want to get updated what's currently going on in your field? Do you, find, do you want to find reviewers for your journal? Do you want to see the big names in your field that you know from the papers? Do you want to get to know the peers at, your uni at other universities that you haven't met before or in different countries? Do you want to find a PhD or a postdoc? So is it more for a job search? Or do you just want to meet old friends and colleagues and just catch up with them and see what's been going on with them. Those are all legitimate reasons to attend meetings and make sure that you find what your goal is for going to one of these meetings. Keep it in mind it can be and should be probably several. This is more of a piece of advice for graduate students, like master students and PhD students. Go to a meeting when you have something to present, a poster or a talk. That was also the advice I received and it makes a world of difference if you're going to a meeting when you have something to present so that is a conversation starter. You can make connections by people going to your poster or people can afterwards approach you after you've given a talk. So it is a much better way to make connections when you have something to present rather than just attending a meeting. If you are presenting something, and I think you definitely should when you're an early career researcher to get most out of it, most out of the meeting, um, if it's a poster or a talk, really put in the effort to make a nice poster that attracts attention and to give a nice polished talk in which you've incorporated feedback by giving it as a, as a um, you know, trial version to your lab mates. But really put in the effort because um, you can leave a very good impression with a great talk or a poster that attracts attention. And the opposite can also be true. So I think it's really worth your time to invest into the preparation of your presentations. Talks or posters are the same. Now there's a couple points about networking. So what's maybe much more important than getting information by attending talks, even though of course it can also be very important, is the networking part of conferences. This means talking to people, making connections. And I still remember, even though this is when I was more advanced in my career, one of the best meetings I've ever been is where I didn't even give a talk and I almost did not actually see any talks. But I was just sitting in the hallway and at a strategically good point where people passed through and I was just talking with people all day long and I thought it was one of the most fun and maybe also most productive meetings I've ever attended. So don't underestimate that networking portion. It's not just about running from talk to talk and taking crazy amounts of notes. It's also just about connecting with people. This is also what makes online conferences in the few um, that I have attended more challenging because it's much more difficult to make these connections effortlessly. I think for the information exchange, they probably work just the same um, than in-person in conferences, but I think that networking part can be a bit more challenging. And so what really helps is if you go to a meeting and um, you have a plan of who you want to meet. I mean, some people even go so far as having like a schedule of who they want to meet on what day and whatever, this is depending on your style. Uh, what I found useful is to say, um, I want to maybe meet 
you know, this person and that person. This is sort of my minimum, minimum goal for this conference because I've seen their papers and just want to know what they're like. Um, and also I may have a goal like I want to meet two new people every day or one new person every day. So I think it's helpful to have some a little bit of a goal that you set yourself. And usually they're fairly easy to achieve. But especially if you're shy, I think it's um, or more like an introvert. I think it's, it's important to have these goals um, so that you push yourself <laughs> to talk to some new people. I also find that typically quite hard, um, but I think it's really worthwhile. Now, also once, this is for sort of after the meeting, once you've made these connections with people, uh, then I think it's a good idea to just have a follow-up email after the conference, like say, you know, hello, we met at the meeting and such and such, talked about this and that, and I just wanted to follow up with, you know, this idea for a paper or a project or whatever you talked about. So I think it's good to sort of uh, yeah, follow up on, on the connections that you have made. Now, one of the best ways to do this networking um, Networking seems like a, an awfully formal way of going about it. It's just basically it's just making friends or making acquaintances um, is to go to these social events that are usually embedded in conferences for, of course, that very reason. Um, and so, again, if you're shy or more introverted, the, those, those may sound like a nightmare. And um, after a while, you may also just have had enough of seeing new people and faces all the time. But I think it's really important to go to those and maybe you can just be in like the smaller bubble of people and talk with people at the dinner table. Usually this is a limited set of people who have like little groups or maybe there's little excursions where you can sort of uh, have a smaller group to interact with and that, that they are really the best and um, most low-key ways to sort of get to talking to people. Now these events and large conferences and all these things, they can be tiring <laughs> if you're sort of more towards the introverted scale of things and you don't like get energy from talking to people. Um, so I find that after a couple days then I'm, I'm just really tired of seeing new faces and interacting with people. I don't want it anymore and then it's uh, very good and very healthy to just have a break. You know, then you can, you, I skip some sessions or um, Sometimes there's also, of course, a day off in the middle of the conference for that very reason, but I think you don't need to stick to that. You can just say, well, this morning I'm just going to have some me time and, you know, don't push yourself over the limit because these things can be exhausting. So, yes, these things are expensive to attend. There's the hotel bills, there's the fees to attending the conference. So the tenancy may be there that I have to so go to, to every single last talk and squeeze as much out of this meeting as I can possibly get. Uh, but, you know, you got to also be kind to yourself. So think about this. Now, when you attend relatively large or broad conferences, then the temptation is, of course, there. And I usually do this myself. You just go to the meetings in your specialty. And this is, of course, fine. And it's a natural thing to do. Those are the people that you know and um, that you want to keep in touch with and so forth. But in these larger conferences, there may also be an opportunity to um, just, you know, broaden your perspective a little bit by going to some talks that are not so obvious. And sometimes this can be really great. I mean, you can um, make a new connection with a different set of people that is unexpected. However, they can also completely fail. You go to a session and you understand nothing of what they're talking about because it's a different subfield. But I think it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to just maybe take one session or two sessions or whatever and um, go to just to some other talks that are quite outside of your immediate area and see if there isn't something that you can draw out of that. That is really an advantage of these bigger conferences because yeah, you have a, a huge portfolio of talks to pick from. If there are workshops, and many conferences offer some sort of workshops, I think this is a very good idea to take those. If they're like in smaller groups, uh, they're easy to, easier to handle because they deal with a limited set of people, and maybe they're also more goal-focused. Maybe they give you a certain skill in the end, like statistical training or training on a certain method. Uh, I once took a spore identification course as a sort of, sort of workshop before or after a conference. So, I mean, these things can be very good because, again, there are also networking opportunities, but you also get a certain skill and uh, can be more hands-on. So, I think they are a very good idea and definitely would advise to take those. 
And finally, when you go to a meeting like that, of course, the tendency is there to hang out mostly with the people from your own lab, if you're going there as a lab and have lunch together and then hang out together at the parties. But, you know, you need to resist that because those are the people that you can basically see every day. But at the meeting, you can really go and meet other people. So I think it's okay to stay together for some things, then also try to invite other people in and also disperse among the crowd at large and resist the temptation to just hang out with the herd that you already know. So those are my tips for meetings and conferences. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.